Welcome to episode 14 of Boston Swap, a director of football challenge here on Boston United FM. Boston United of Conference North and Boston Town of the United Counties League have been switched in the non-league football pyramid. I have taken over at United to hopefully guide them back up the divisions. However, my board have installed a perfect director of football to take control over club transfers, scouting and backroom staff. In the first season, we won the United Counties League Premier Division as well as the FA Vars. Then, in the second season, we got a successive promotion by winning the Northern Premier League Division 1 South East. We faced the challenge of the Northern Premier League Premier Division this season, and again we passed with flying colours, comfortably winning the league. We had reached the third round of the FA Cup in the last episode, but unfortunately lost at home to Championship side Reading in a home replay. We've not lost a game since then, and we have just two games of the season left. First up is a trip to Wembley for an FA Trophy final against FC Halifax Town. We beat our divisional rivals Whitby Town 10-0 on aggregate in the two-legged semi-final. We will then complete the campaign with a Northern Premier League Challenge Cup final against Bradford Park Avenue. We ended the season a massive 33 points clear of Nantwich Town, who also came up with us after winning the playoffs. We finished with an incredible record of 37 wins out of 42 games, scoring 127 goals. We didn't suffer defeat in our last 26 league games, winning the last 12 of them. Games Trinity suffered relegation by just two points. Grantham Town survived. Boston Town finished bottom of their league yet again, winning just three of their 38 games. They will be back at their original level next season in the United Counties League Premier Division. Will they be able to halt their slide? For the FA Trophy final at Wembley, we are missing centre-back Tunji Akinola due to suspension and attacking midfielder Francisco Landim through injury. James Neald and Kwaku Aduro are our central defensive partnership and Joe Hilton starts in the spot he's been fighting for with Landim all season. Striker Terrell Whitaker scored 42 league goals in his 38 starts. Add on 12 cup goals and he broke the 50 goal barrier. Halifax finished their season in the National League in 10th place, 6 points outside of the playoff places. They seem to have ended with inconsistent form, winning two of their final eight league games. They beat Burgess Hill Town in the semi-finals. It's time to get to Wembley. Well, it's been a little bit of time since the last game of the league season and this. I think it's been about three weeks. We did manage to organise a home friendly with Notts County, who finished one place above Halifax. And we unluckily lost 1-0. It was really just for fitness reasons, just to keep them ticking over. And hopefully we'll do what we've done a few times this season and beat a National League team. Right, I've got an early throw. Olofsson. This could be one of his last games. He did reject a couple of moves in January to go to football league sides. And he is wanted again. He's rated as a League One player, but they're coming forward with Nolan, but Siverter saves it. Right, another long throw. We've got there first. It's bobbling around, but I think we've got a penalty. Should be Whitaker to take. He has missed a few just lately towards the end of the season. But I trust him. But no, the keeper gets there. He's missed another one. Right, corner this time. Goes near post. And Aduro has got the first goal. Corner goes in. Six yards out. Keeper gets a touch on it, but he only pushes it into the side netting. And that's half time. Well, apart from the early scare, we seem to have done all right. We have gone ahead and we've missed a penalty. That may well affect Whitaker. He's not had the greatest of games so far. We have got nibs on the bench. But for now, I don't see any need to make any changes. We've got five subs available. We can make three changes. Plus another one in extra time, I believe, if we get there. But we'll just kick off the second half. Right, 
Right, we're trying to build right from in the corner. It's back to Civita. Chips it forward to Hilton. Well, we lose out. Long range effort, but just went over. Right, long, long throw into the area. Shot was blocked. It's out for a corner. Ollison to take. Philogene Bides gets it back to Olofsson, but the move breaks down. Right, there's less than 20 minutes to go. I think it's time for Nibs to come on for Whitaker. He's not really been the same since the penalty miss. And I'm thinking of taking Philogene Bides off. Bringing Carrington on. I'll leave him out on that left-hand side and we'll save another change for later in the game. Long throw in towards Nibs. It's Mingi on the edge. It's blocked, but they're trying to counter. Can we get the ball back with Try with Haygarth? He's on a booking, but he's chasing after the ball. Right, we almost get it back, but it's with Koiki. But Hilton does get it back. He's now advancing into the area. It's to Nibs. Last ditch challenge. Another long throw from Mundell Smith towards Nibs. Mingi on the edge. Haygarth, he gets, he's trying to get some space. He gives it to Hilton. Is he going to have a shot? He does, but Slicker saves it. Long ball forward towards Grant on the left wing. He's through. But Siverter saves it. And Aduro saves it on the line. Another long throw. Can we make this one count? No, straight into the arms of Slicker. Right, Mingy gets it back. It's with Nibs to through to Agustine. Surely oh, he's put it wide. Right, five minutes to go. Let's make this last change. I'm going to bring Mingy off and bring Jermaine Anderson on. Right, they've got a corner. And they've scored. They've equalised. Liam Nolan. We've paid for those missed chances. And this could mean extra time. Hector Ingram with the corner. One bounce. And Nolan is there to hit it home on the half volley. And it's extra time. Something we really didn't want. We shouldn't really be in this situation. But... I feel like I should take Olofsson off, but he's playing so well. And he doesn't really need to play in the Challenge Cup final that we've got in the week. So I'm going to leave him out there. He's our creative force. I'm going to leave this one change in reserve. We've only got two defenders to bring on. They're mainly fullbacks. So we'll just see what we can do. Half time in extra time. Okay, let's bring Dodgson on for Mundell Smith. And see what happens in the next 15 minutes. Will it be penalties? Right, Olofsson down the right hand side. Hilton through to Nibs. He's through on goal, but the keeper saves it. What's going to happen here? Carrington picks it up. It's back to Dodgson. He's getting into the area. Left foot, but the keeper saves it again. But it's gone to penalties. We've not really got any great penalty takers out there. But Nibs can go first. Then we'll go Hilton, Olofsson, Haygarth, Agustin. Here we go. We've gone to 3D. Earring. And it's in. 
Hagarth. Crucial penalty. And the keeper saves it. Halifax. If they score, they win the FA Trophy. We are relying on Civita. And it's Duckworth to take. He runs up. And he scores. And Halifax have won the trophy. How very disappointing. We had 27 shots over the 120 minutes. 19 on target. But. Unfortunately, it's a missed penalty that does for us. And we lose out in the final at Wembley. Duckworth, the man who scored the winning penalty, was their captain. And it was Max Hagarth that missed. We do get £31,000 for losing in the final. We've given a little bit of that out to the squad. One more match to go. Northern Premier League Challenge Cup final. It's on a neutral ground. It's against Bradford Park Avenue. This should be one that's a little bit more straightforward to win. We'll come back for match day. And here we go. I've chosen Nibs ahead of Whitaker up front. Carrington comes in on the right hand side. Turner on the left. Dodgson on the left hand side of defence. Morrison's ahead of Olofsson because Olofsson's not quite fit enough. So we'll kick off. Right, long throw from Morris. Goes near post. A Hagarth has a shot from outside the area, but it's tipped over for a corner. Carrington with it. Goes near post. Maduro picks it up back to Carrington. Gets it back into the box. Mingi's on the edge. What can he do? Backs to Oduro, but the move breaks down. Forward by Bradford Park Avenue, but we win the ball back. It's with Civita. He's advancing forward with Hagarth in the centre circle. Out to Turner on the left-hand side. Can he cut inside? He tries to, but gives it back to Hagarth. Morris shoots just wide. Right, Dodgson advancing with the ball on the left-hand side. Back to Hagarth. Trying to get it out to this right-hand side. It's with Morris. He's into the box and I think he's hit the post. Free kick. Just outside the line. Turner shoots. It's saved. The keeper makes an absolutely fantastic save from the rebound as well. Corner. Goes near post and we've gone 1-0 up at last. Kwaku Aduro. Fourth goal of the season. Heads it in at the near post. Fantastic corner. Missed by our first man, but Aduro doesn't miss it. We're into stoppage time. We've got another free kick just outside. It's with Morris. He shoots and it's just wide. And that is the half-time whistle. 22 shots in that first half. We've been absolutely all over them. I don't think we're going to make any changes unless it's for fitness. But we'll just keep an eye on Aduro and Hilton. And anybody who may just lose a little bit of condition in the second half. But we'll kick off. Free kick for BPA. And it's just been nodded. A smidgen wide. We've got another free kick. But it's cleared. Hughes picks it up. But Morris gets there first. Carrington is now on the match. Into the area. He's through on goal. And it's a penalty. Who's going to take it this time? It should be Hilton. Indeed it is. He steps up. Sends the keeper the wrong way and we've gone 2-0 in front. This should be it. We're miles better than they are. Hilton sends the keeper the wrong way. 2-0. I'll 
attacking throw in for BPA. It's with Francis. But Hilton takes it off him. Forward through to Nibs. He's on goal. Keeper saves it on Gongo. But he clears it out for a throw. Right, 63 minutes on the clock. Let's make a change. Let's bring Aduro off. We'll bring Mundelsmith on. He's not really a centre-back, but he'll do a job for us. And then I think I'm going to bring Agustine on for Eddie Carrington. Free kick outside the box yet again. Morris again. Can he do better this time? He shoots. And again, it's just wide. Right, last 15 minutes or so. I'm going to bring Olofsson on. It's probably going to be his last appearance for us. And he might as well go out in a final. OK, it's the Northern Premier League Challenge Cup final. But it's a final nonetheless. And we're about to win it. And there we are. Full time. We have won the Northern Premier League Challenge Cup. So we are the Northern Premier League double winners. Maduro and Hilton with the goals. 35 shots in all. They didn't even have a shot on target in the whole game. There we have it. Celebrate a double. Northern Premier League Challenge Cup and Northern Premier League Premier Division. We get just under £11,000 for winning it. 25 members of our squad have played in a game in the Challenge Cup. So they each get a medal. Seven and a half thousand pound paid out to the squad. And there we are, we are the winners. We'll come back in a second for some end of season awards. And they've come in. So let's have a look at the overall best 11 squad. And six of this year's team, which is not surprising considering we've won the league so comfortably have been added to the squad. Terrell Whitaker, Francisco Landim, Tunji Akinola, Jaden Mundelsmith, and Surin Olufsen, plus Max Hagarth as well. So if we actually look at the team, so there's Sivita, Morris, he's still in our squad, so he's Neald, Akinola, Mundelsmith. The 11 out there is basically 10 members of this year's squad, plus Mark Bragg. Whitaker goes onto the bench, as does Fabian Spies and Olufsen. Adam Hallam, he's been around since the start. Landim, he's one of the players from the original squad. And if we have a look at the statistics, so there's Hilton. He's played 157 games for us so far. Whitaker's played 61 and scored 54 goals. Bragg ended up scoring more goals than he played games. But if we look at the average ratings... Soren Olofsson, 7.78 over his 38 games for us this season. There's a reason why so many clubs are interested in him. If we have a look, it's growing every week. Bristol Rovers, Charlton, Crewe. There's teams from the Championship, League One, they're all after him. If we look at his coaching report, he's apparently operating at Skybet League One level. I just hope that we get a decent fee for him and a sell-on percentage. If we have a look at the awards, so unsurprisingly Terrell Whitaker gets Fans Player of the Season. He got 50% of the votes. Goal of the Season went to Jay Mingi. Gets the ball 30 yards out, powers it. Into the corner. And the young player of the season, Surin Olufsen. Looking at the stats, Terrell Whitaker, 54 goals. He was our top goal scorer, as we saw before. Surin Olufsen, 7.78 average rating. He was the best of the bunch. 27 assists from right fullback. Pass completion, as ever, goes to the goalkeeper. 13 Man of the Match awards each for Olufsen and Whitaker. 
Akinola ended up with 15 yellow cards, which is why he ended up missing the last three games of the season. Eddie Carrington becomes the first player in our career to receive two red cards in the same season. Season review, so we got through to the FA Cup third round, lost at home to Reading in a replay, lost in the final of the FA Trophy as we've just seen, but we did win the Northern Premier League Challenge Cup and Premier Division. If we look at the league position graph, you can see that after game one we were top of the league and after game 42 we were top of the league and we didn't drop off at all. Average attendance of 1,795, which is less than half of our 5,000 capacity stadium. And again, we've used the highest number of players in our division. Looking at our expectations, so we're still not going to be signing players over the age of 30. And again, the board wanted us to win the league. Looking at the way we've performed against the National League sides this year, and some teams at Conference North and South level, we've done very, very well. But to win the league, it's going to be a tough ask. Maybe a playoff place would be more realistic. And that's the season done. Season three is over. Promotion number three is gained. I'm not sure how busy the summer is going to be, whether we're going to lose some players like Olofsson, maybe Agustin, maybe Whitaker. All of them are under contract for next season, so we'll definitely get a transfer fee. But we've got a plan for a season in Conference North. Finally, we make it back. Can we make it promotion number four? We'll find out next season. But if you've enjoyed the content of this video, please don't forget to leave a like. And for more videos, please subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.